Out. Excuse me? Out, I said. I am off duty. As soon as I get in, you off duty? I... I know want to argue. Man, I don't want to argue either. You're gonna go where I say. This won't cost you. Okay, let me get this straight. The wedding you're inviting me to is your ex-wife's? Yes. As your date? Isn't it romantic? No, no, it's not, actually. It's perverse. So what's your answer? Well, I, I have to say yes. Why do you have to say yes? Well, because I'm, I'm completely fascinated. But I have to remind you, I'm a writer, and it's too juicy not to use it. No, fiction only. That's the deal. Come on, no newspaper okay, stories. Okay, well, there you go. Again, you know, making the rules. Only one. Okay, well, I have one. We're not sharing a room. Of course not, separate rooms. All right, easy, Chief. Of course, it's a little definite for my ego. Well, I'm not just pretending to be a gentleman. Good try. Excuse me, sir, but your credit card was rejected. Are you kidding? Uh, no, I ran it twice. What? No, please, I don't want you paying, Monty. No, Come on, no. please. No, you know what? Please. You'll owe me. I like the sound of this. Manny. Yeah. All right. All right, I'll be right there. Duty calls. Right? Yeah, same here. Looks like you have a new U.S. attorney. Oh, yeah? Who? President names New Jersey lawyer slash politico Bruce Logan as U.S. attorney. Ah, oh, damn. Could, I'm sorry. Can I have my pager? What do we got, Captain? The cab driver shot Julius Tate. The basketball player? Hmm. Georgetown University, great kid. Oh, I gotta go tell his parents. Richard Cabrizi. I'm Jack Mannion, Chief of Police. You're the boss. I tell him I do nothing wrong. Hmm? Self-defense. He tried to rob me. He asked you for money. Yes. He tried to stick me up. He said, I want your dollars. He go for weapon. I shoot. Self-defense. This is Mr. Debrizzi's gun. That's an illegal weapon, Mr. Debrizzi. Where'd you get it? Three times I am robbed, and who will help me? This is why I shoot. He had no gun. No! This is what Tate was reaching for. Pen and paper. that boy grow up. Did you talk to his family, Joe? Yeah. Some parts of this job you never get used to. Uh, yeah. Julius Tate. You here? What a shame. Did you ever see him play? He's on the same team with my nephew. Nikki, how you feeling about uh, Bruce Logan, his new U.S. attorney, huh? God, I knew we were getting a conservative administration, but this guy's like a tail of the hun. What's a slick New Jersey attorney coming down here for? Well, for a shark like Logan, there's no better pool to feed in than Washington, D.C. And you're here. I'm the bait. Mr. Mayor. Joe. Gentlemen. Chief. Nick. Sit down. Chief, I want the guy who shot Julius Tate charged with murder. Well, that's up to the U.S. attorney, Mayor. This is a big case, Chief. Too many times my constituency have felt their lives were undervalued. You know, there's an old expression. Kill a mule, buy another. Kill a... Hire another. We've got to put an end to those days forever. Amen to that. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Logan. 
pleasure to have a man with your expertise on our side. Well, I'm not sure Mr. Pierce would agree with you. How is it that you described me, Mr. Pierce? Uh, courtroom cannibal. Mm, nice alliteration. We were just discussing the murder of Julius Tate. Man, what a tragedy. I just wish we had a more solid case. What are you talking about, Bruce? No confessions, no witnesses. Your officers didn't do me any favors, Jack. Well, you're here three hours already, you're pointing fingers? Gentlemen, do we have a problem with this case? No, no, look, I'm sure I can at least get manslaughter. Oh. Manslaughter? Mm -hmm. Oh, you charge this guy with manslaughter, it'll plead down to a traffic ticket before you're through. I don't give anybody a break, man, and you should know that. Logan, if we don't get murder charges here, we're going to have a lot of angry citizens. Yeah, we're going to do our best to take care of things, Mayor. I just wouldn't want things to turn out like the, like the Crawford case in uh, Newark. No, oh, this is nothing like that. But you'll get your conviction, Mr. Mayor. In fact, I'll just have to work a little harder for it, that's all. Yeah. You're a busy man, Bruce. Thanks for stopping by. Mr. Mayor, Mr. Logan, Deputy Chief Nolan. Can't believe his head made it through the door. What is this Crawford thing? It was a murder case. An illegal search turned a potential life sentence into a walk. And Logan's part in it? He defended Crawford. Well, he's on our side now. Bruce Logan's on nobody's side, Mr. Mayor, but his own. Look, Chief, I want a murder conviction on this Julius Tate case. Now you do whatever you have to do to get it, but get it. So, uh, you know, there's a really big market in returned engagement rings, you know that? What ring? Shut up, Danny. What ring? Giselle's engagement ring. She gave it back. Why? She thinks I'm not ready. Are you not ready? I don't know. Don't know about what? Nancy, this is not the, the place. He doesn't know if he loves her. Danny, knock it off. Tough guy. Nancy. Yeah? I need the stats on crimes against taxi drivers in the last 60 days, please. You got it, Chief. Here are your messages. The Eagle was landed. That was a good movie. It was Robert Duvall and Michael Caine, the plot yeah, to kidnap. not the movie. The Eagle, your Eagle, landed in New York. What are you talking about? The Italian bronze Eagle to complete the renovation on the front of the building. You ordered it? No, I did not. Well, you signed off on the plans. Look. Oh, wait, 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 wait a minute. I thought the Eagle was already there. I mean, the architect added this monstrosity and I signed for it? Mm hmm How much is it? 25,000. Yeah, 25,000. Well, send it back. How can I send it back? It's from Italy. It's on its way here. Hey, we've got a new DA. Just in time to deal with madman Mannion's mayhem in our city. Bruce Logan, save us from the shootings and the shoes. Of this is PJ Hawks, the last bastion of sanity in DC. Hello, I thought you were supposed to be in Orlando. Oh, it's tomorrow. Oh. Did you ever see the movie Bridge on the River Kwai with Alec Guinness? What's that? What? Force march through Burma. The men's shoes are in tatters. Their trousers are falling off. They're dropping from exhaustion. Yeah. Oh, that's going to be you walking through Disney World. <laughs> and you die in a thirst in sea world. Famished in jungle world. It's a rite of passage for all parents. I want you to go shopping. Get some sensible shoes, water bottles, good books. Cabbie stats. Sir? Yeah. I checked on those credit cards. They're maxed out. It must be a mistake. I paid them. Oh, and the insurance adjuster called about your car accident. What car accident? Danny, would you take care of this one? Chief Mannion. Yes. Yeah. Doris Evans, president of the Cab Drivers Association. How do you do? Come on. Have a seat. No, I don't want a seat. Can I get you something to drink? Some no, water? I want to find out why you're looking to charge one of my cab drivers with murder because he defended himself. Julius Tate was not armed. He was shot with an illegal weapon. That's not defending yourself. The basketball player threatened him and then reached into his inside pocket. Julius now, Tate. Correct me if I'm wrong, Chief, hmm. but I've read many accounts of where cops have shot unarmed people for doing the same thing. Okay, let's get something straight, Ms. Evans. 
All homicides, whether the police or citizens, go through the grand jury. I don't make the charge. Well, that may be so, Chief. But if my cab drivers had decent protection, they wouldn't have to resort to defending themselves. Do you know what cab drivers have to do to make a living? They work for minimum wage, with every lowlife and drunk sitting right behind their back. Driving a cab is the most dangerous job in America. Now, I've heard all your big talk, Chief. You owe my people some protection. Mayor, Chief. Ethan? Doris. I'm sorry, Chief, but I cannot sit back and watch my drivers victimized like this. I have to speak out. Well, let me get the door for you. No, it's all right. Thank you. I got it. Don't underestimate that woman, Chief. She will say or do anything to push her agenda or to get what she wants. Anything. You two have a history, huh? Oh, boy. I gave Doris Evans her start in politics. Gave her a job, and she spent every minute of every day on that job undermining me. Oh, she's a troublemaker. What did the flowers come from? Not from you. Obviously not. So, where did they come from? You're a detective. Detect. So why did Parisi shoot Julius Payne? In a word, fear. If the police did their job, this never would have happened. What or who, in your opinion, is... The mayor. The police chief. They are the ones who are really responsible for this tragedy. My taxi drivers have no protection. They have been abandoned by this police department. And when one of them, an honest, hard-working immigrant, defends himself, they paint him as Charles Manson. You're saying that she I'm abandoned saying you. We have been abandoned by our police. We have to take steps to protect ourselves. Are you advocating taxi drivers carrying guns? No, never. But they have to do something. So I will advise my drivers to not pick up dangerous-looking passengers. Who is that? The vast majority of crime in this city is committed by young black men. Are you saying don't pick up young black men? Yes. Oh, what kind of reaction do you expect from the black community following such a statement? Oh. No oh, did, did, did a black woman just say that? Well, it's a racist policy and I will not tolerate it. I want any driver who refuses to pick up a passenger arrested. Can't do it, Mayor. We can seize their licenses, get them off the street. Then do it. to discuss the brewing controversy in our nation's capital caused by DC Cab Association President Doris Evans' call for her drivers to not pick up young black males. U.S. Attorney Logan, I'll be back to you in a moment. Chief Mannion, what's your response to Ms. Evans' charge? Well, I thought it was unnecessary and irresponsible, and I thought it was inflammatory. Uh, excuse me, Chief, and I'm not one for scapegoats, but I think we have to look at the level of protection that the city offers these cabs. Well, Mr. Logan, that's exactly what I've done. What I've not received is any kind of uh, cooperation from the Cab Drivers Association. Oh, so now we're to blame. Well, you could install bulletproof shields in the cabs, Ms. Evans. Would you tell your rich friends over in Georgetown, sorry, we can't protect you, you'll have to put in your own bulletproof glass? If they were driving cabs, yes, I would. Citizen feels threatened, they have to take precautions. It's as simple as locking your door. And when we do things to protect ourselves, like Mr. Tabrizi... Like shooting people. Like Mr. Tabrizi, then we are locked up. Now, what I am calling for is an alternative. Mayor Baker, where do you weigh in on this? Now, this is totally ridiculous. I've called on every city employee to boycott the taxi cabs. And I'm urging every citizen in the district to do the same. Do not give your hard-earned money to an industry that so blatantly and shamelessly discriminates. Our hard-earned money? That's right, yeah, Ms. Well, Evans, hard-earned money. this chief uses our hard-earned money, thousands of dollars, to import exotic statues from Italy. What are you talking about now, Ms. Evans? Chief, are you familiar with this accusation? Oh, well, I believe Ms. Evans is referring to a decorative eagle that was ordered for the police department. You yes. believe? I know. $25,000 squandered on some bird for this man's ego. Well, can I offer you a, a libation, something to take the edge off? Yeah, at least one. <laughs> Jack, you left me out there looking like a dummy. What was that eagle crap? Well, Mayor, there was a construction order with this eagle drawn on it. Now, I, I thought that we were restoring the damn thing. I didn't know we were ordering a new one. 
I screwed up. Well, you take the heat on this one. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Mayor. Ms. Evans. She's blaming all young black men for the actions of a few. This is <laughs> this boycott. This boycott is the same thing. It's going to affect all the taxi drivers for the actions of a few. What's the difference? You handle the policing. I'll handle the politicking, all right? And as for those cab drivers, I want their licenses pulled. Yes, sir. Take a look at broke up with your fiance. We're just having problems over the wedding. I started having doubts. Well, I mean, everybody has doubts. Well, come on, that's normal. I mean, the ones that don't, they don't last. Take it from me, I've had enough experience. Well, yeah, I just don't want to do the wrong thing. I mean, we don't believe in divorce, and I have to be sure. Did you tell her that? Yeah, I did. What'd she say? She gave me my ring back. Uh-huh. Anyway, I had a lot of work to do. Uh -huh. I'm not letting you off the hook that easily. I mean, don't do what I do. You know, the manion thing, pour yourself into your work. I mean, that's no good. Hey, take the weekend off. Take her out to dinner. Go dancing. Do you dance? Yeah, I dance. Dancing with her for God. Baby. Go dancing. Tell her how you feel. Do you love this one? Yeah. In the last year, we had 83 cab robberies, 11 in the last month. As you can see, there's also two hot spots. Both of these are in the Northern District, just a few blocks east of Rock Creek Park. These hot spots are like mountains. Mannion's Mountains of Crime. We're gonna level them. All right, it's open mic time. The subject, cab drivers, the most dangerous job in Washington, D.C. Let's hear it. If these cabs are going to refuse to pick up African-Americans, we'll have black officers undercover hailing cabs. We hole in any driver that doesn't stop for them. I don't know. If the cab had driven past Julius Tate, he'd still be alive. That's because being a young black man is the most dangerous job in D.C. Cab drivers need bulletproof shields, like in New York. Yeah, but it's the owner's fault. They're too cheap to put them in. These are immigrants. They're struggling to make a living, and nobody cares about them. From now on, we do. Now, cab drivers are five times more likely to be killed on their job than police officers. They're 40 times more likely to be killed than the average American worker. Now, we're not going to let cab drivers discriminate, but they do have a point, gentlemen. Now, I think if we protect them, then we can stop the controversy. Yeah, but that's a big if, Chief. Cabbies are the perfect victim. You sit behind them, you order them to drive to an isolated spot, and you rob them. That's right. The coward's victim of choice. Now. I think we ought to develop a strategy to protect these cab drivers and at the same time go hunting for the robbers. I think we should be putting undercover teams in the cabs and targeting these areas. Johnny, what are the linking factors? Got Union Station, taxi stands, the metro lines and shopping malls. Simple, right? They pick them up here, they rob them here. And guess what? That's where we're going to be. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Which character are you going to pull out of your hat this time? We'll see. Maybe a little jack chicken. <laughs> hey, so, yeah. There's a guy out there who's using your identity, your credit cards. He even has a driver's license in the name. The people from the accident give us this description. This guy's got a lot of guts stealing the police chief's identity. Maybe he doesn't know you're a police chief. He just gets a name, a social security number, then he gets your card number. It's easy. Maybe I could say this guy signed for the Eagle. Ha! Oh, I think this guy's too clever for that. So. Steady. So, did you get Nancy some flowers for Secretary's Day? I don't have any money, McGregor. No credit cards. How would I do that? Why? No, no. Nick. Yeah. You know it's Secretary's Day? It is? Yeah. McGregor just told me. I, I didn't get Nancy anything. Yeah, that's all right. You got time. You know, they call it Secretary's Week now. That way they can sell more cards and candy and stuff. All right. Well, would you get her some flowers for me? You know, a nice bouquet. Well, have them delivered, Nikki. Yep. Seven dollars, forty-three dollars in tips, and I clean a vomit out of that cab. 
time. It is the most time you ever spend in the back of a cab in your life. Oh, come on. How many times you been passed up trying to catch a cab? None. Those cabbies don't come to my neighborhood. <laughs> Yo! You're up, man. All right. Hey, what's up? What's up, man? It's night, huh? Yeah, man. We hit it. J Street by the park? All right. Temple's on the move. So where you coming from, man? Downtown. Downtown, huh? Yeah. You been busy? Yeah. Here, right, right here. Right here? Yeah. On the right? <clears throat> Give me your money. All right, man. All right, just be cool, all right? Just be cool. Look, I got AIDS, and this is my blood, okay? Oh, you messed with me, and you're dead. Come on, come on. Give me the money. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, just be cool. Just be cool. It's right here. Come on. That's all you got? Look, Come I, on. I, I, I got some more. It's down here in my sock. Let's be cool. Let's just let me get it. Last bit on the left. Thank you. Temple? Chief. Chief Nolan? I'm sorry, he got away before I could react. What did the test say? It's too early to tell. We'll have to continue testing your blood for six months and then we'll know for sure. So I just wait? No, we go after this guy. We get him. And then we'll be sure. In the meantime, the best thing you can do is rest. No, Chief. I gotta work. Doctor, I can go home, right? Oh, well, maybe it's better if you stay here. We can uh, take some... No, 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 Doctor, I'm fine. All we can do is just wait and see, right? Yes. Fine. Well, I'll notify the nurse then. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you. Uh, well, uh, I think the doctor said they're not here. We had a case over in the 5th. Sergeant Dan Hanover got stabbed while fighting the junkie and he got infected. How is it? He's okay. Takes his medication eight times a day. He's learning to live with it. Jill, I want to get this guy. Check with your informants, the junkie hangouts. Let's get it done. Oh, thank God all they told me was you were that in. Who is she? His fiance. Temple, please let me take you home. No. No, I'm okay. All right. Now I want to go back to work. Temple. Don't worry. Now I want you to go back to work. All right? Okay. He confessed to what? Robbing two cabbies with a twenty-two. Good work. You got have anything else? Watch out, will you? Right. In that purse. You don't tell the me that. The are too tight. Come back. And you don't have to pull on it like that. You just take your hands off the of of me. Hold it! What's going on here, Haywood? I want to file a complaint. This good gentleman took a cab ride. He went to pay me with a 50. I couldn't make the change. I asked him to wait so I can make the change. He become a rake and he spit in my face. I didn't know you were a cop. Who spit in his face? That's nasty. Haywood, I want you back on the street. Why don't you put this chunk in a holding cell till we can process it? Hey, what does that mean? Appreciate Deputy it. Chief Nolan. Mr. U.S. Attorney, you taking a tour? No, come to see you. Maybe we could step in your office. Hmm? Why? Well, I know they made Mannion the chief when you were in line for the job. I thought you might want to talk. Maybe we could help each other. 
All right. I'll cut to the chase. Remember the Crawford case I mentioned? New Jersey. That's right. Big murder case, screwed up. Well, you've been around, so you know whenever the department takes a hit, somebody has to take a fall for it, right? You might want to look that case up. See what happened to Mannion's deputy. So if we start where Temple picked this guy up, you follow the route to where this guy robbed him. He picked up the perp two blocks before the metro line and it ended near Rock Creek Park. So the guy probably lives or works nearby. Well, at least he knows the area. He may go to a friend. He might have a car stash nearby. This guy doesn't have a car. That's right. Why is it? If he can afford a car, he can afford a gun. Now, come on. Exactly. Joe, I'll assign more patrol cars. Chief, if we can clear the area of real cab drivers and let us do the pickups. Yeah, hey, well, that's a good idea. Because within this area, you have the highest concentration of crime against cab drivers. And that should give us a crime prevention strategy. But I'm going to tell you, the best strategy we have is if we get this guy. All right, you heard the man. Let's go to work. Move out. How are we going to keep cabbies out? They're hardly our allies right now. We killed two birds with one stone, Joe. You contact the mayor, tell him we're start busting cabbies in the target area, then I'll leak to the Cab Drivers Association. We're going to start busting cabbies for the first few days only. That should keep them out. So, are you opening a flower shop? I like flowers. Who sent these? An admirer. The same admirer? You jealous? Don't mess me around. Did you ever give me flowers? Did you ask? What, a woman has to ask for flowers now? Obviously not. Or did you ask for these? Do you want to have this argument in front of the chief? Oh, my. Mm. Thanks for the flowers, chief. Oh, they're lovely, aren't they? Yeah, I should have had those yesterday, but Nick said secretary's day lasts all week, so there's still plenty of time. Uh, actually, a lot of time. Secretary's week is until April. Oh. Well, I hope they last. Chief Mannion's office. Nikki. Yeah? Where's my eagle? Left the New York docks yesterday. I reckon it's probably in uh, Delaware by now. More importantly, my source of the Post told me they've already written the headline for its unveiling. Mannion gives D.C. the bird. Oh, I like it. Chief, Romer's call to confirm your luncheon for tomorrow for two. Romer's? Somebody get a pay raise? I hate French food. No, this is that imposter. Imposter? Oh, God, don't tell me there's two of you. You want me to get McGregor to stake it out? No, I'll take care of it, Nancy. Uh, Nikki, on this unveiling, I'd really like everybody there, the mayor, the media, everyone. Chief, I'm trying to bury this thing. So trust me. Chief, I'm going to work the power shift. Let's talk, Tim. Chief, you said I could resume duties. Uh-huh. Okay, you tell me. What are you thinking? Chief, I need to work. Even if I am infected, what do you expect me to do? Check into a hospice or something like that? Thousands of people get on with their lives, and that's all I'm trying to do. Well, until we know more, Temple, you're on desk duty. And that's that. Crime fans, this is PJ Hawks, and hell yes, I want young black men picked up. I want them picked up by Mannion the Birdman and his cops. Arrest the hoodlums, the robbers, and the muggers, and do it now. It's magnificent. It's a uh, solid bronze. It's got a six-foot wingspan. Well, I appreciate the offer, Mr. Pierce, but we really have no use for a bronze either. All right, well, thank you for your time. Hey, Nick, this is from Mannion. It's from Italy. Nancy says you're the one to deal with this problem, so, uh, here you go. What is this? Dear Mr. Mannion, here's the scale model of your eagle. If it meets your approval, we will commence to craft the real eagle at once. That's it. It's just a model. It hasn't even been built yet. This is fantastic. Watch. Watch me put Mrs. Evans in her place as I leak this to the post. Oh, Nico, it's a joke. 
But he was about to call the post. Yeah, but you... you... We thought you would call the chief first. It was a joke on the chief. Uh -huh. We forgot about your impulse to call the press conference about everything under the sun every five minutes. No, uh, see, M M McGregor, I can understand, because the, the Irish connection to Nancy and... But Temple, no. I mean, to torture another soul like this is... Sorry, man. Bad joke. Not that bad. Temple, how you doing, anyway? I'm fine. Just that I, uh, I talked to a couple doctor friends of mine, and they said that the odds are on your side. Nick, I don't believe in odds. I believe in God's will. Amen to that. <laughs> Here, uh, see if the chief finds that at all funny. Yeah, we'll see. Street in Juniper. Uh, I'm not sure their location. It's over by the Beltway. This isn't the right route. Hey, who's driving here? You want drive? Look, I'm telling you, you're going the wrong way. Chill out. Traffic round by Dupont Seca. I got AIDS. This is my blood. Man. You give me your money or I'm gonna kill you. What are you doing? How you doing? Feeling pretty good, Chief. No, I thought you always stayed in character, Haywood. I do. Uh huh. You show me a taxi driver's willing to total a taxi. What was that, an improv? You want the truth, Chief? Okay. I just kept thinking, I hope this damn airbag works. He leaned over, had that needle in my neck. I thought my only chance was to put this sucker right through the windshield. Is that him? Yes, sir. He refused to stop for some guy. The guy caught up with him at an intersection. Beat the crap out of him. Lately, and you've been very patient with me. You know how sometimes there's people in your life, and they're always there. You know, friends, loved ones, and they're always around you. And they're always with you, and you get complacent. 
You forget how much they bring to your life. And that's what happened to me. And then this thing happened, and for a few days, I had to think about what my life might be like if you weren't in it. And it made me realize how much I love you. Will you have me? another cabbie in the hospital i saw him i talked to him i think you're responsible for what happened you've got some nerve a crime is committed and you blame me well i'm holding you accountable for exploiting the situation yeah i'm trying to get your cops to do their job well that's what i do there right now risking their lives to protect your drivers and they are dealing with the anger and the resentment generated by the Tate shooting I got it I am tired of playing this political game now the mayor and I have come up with a good plan to protect your drivers I invited him here to unveil that plan and also to diffuse the anger this episode has caused I tell you what you can be part of the solution, or you can keep stirring the pot. What's it going to be? Sorry it had to come to this. But if I had to, I'd do it again. Would you? Not on my watch. No new flowers, no? No, but it's still early. Yeah. What's this? Seeds. Seeds are better than flowers. Because we can plant the seeds, we can watch the flowers grow, and we'll have beautiful flowers. Danny. Don't go and ruin it all and say I'm a romantic. So where did you get these flowers here? You can't let it go, can you? No, I can't. I bought them for myself, to brighten up my life. You bought them yourself? You see, now you don't believe me. No, I do. I do. So what about these? Mannion. Mannion, eh? The owners will be installing distress lights in all their cabs. Now we're also going to establish a network of distress zones. These are streets where patrol cars will be available 24-7. They'll be looking for any problems in the cabs, Mr. Mayor. The city is determined that the good people who provide transport at all hours of the day will not be victimized. Likewise, we are determined that all of our citizens be provided with access to transportation. Sevens. The taxi drivers of this city are likewise committed to servicing all our citizens. And that brings us to the evening. And I would like to say uh, how wonderful it was to receive all the suggestions from the press as to what Mannion could do with this bird. But uh, I decided the best thing to do, given the week of turmoil the city's been through, was to contact Mr. Holmes of Eagle's Lair Insurance. And we have agreed on a system of barter. In exchange for the Eagle, Mr. Holmes and uh, Eagle's Lair Insurance have decided to donate a basketball court to be known as the Julius Tate Memorial Basketball Court be constructed at Potomac House. Well, I know you good folks in the press are going to be screaming about city funds and private industry, but I figure any time we can get a public basketball court for an Eagle, it's a good deal for the city. Thank you.
you know, my number one fan. Every time I see your shtick, I'm amazed you can still sell that snake oil. I'm sending you a lot of cab robbers this week, Brucey. What are you going to do about that? Don't worry, man. You, you won't find me lacking in vigor or vigilance. Now, it takes more than broad shoulders to make a man, Harvey. You got a long way to go. What? High noon. 1952, Gary Cooper, Lloyd Bridges. Come on in. I see you in court, Bruce. This place is a little fancy for lunch, isn't it? I brought a lot of cash, because this one's on you. Yeah, a uh, Mannion party of two, please. Um, I've already seated that party. No, you haven't. Would you show me to my table? Be right back, Marty. Take advantage of him? No. No, I'm afraid I'm going to take advantage of you. <laughs> oh, what happened to uh, separate rooms for the weekend? Well, Chief, I mean, this whole weekend, it has such a... such an air of mystery and suspense. Don't you think? And there's the former wife and your first love, the other man. But I was just thinking maybe I would add my own spin to it. We shouldn't order. Waiter. Waiter? Um, miss? This is the Biography Channel. You want to be yourself, but you're not allowed to be yourself. This is the Biography Channel. I was just beside myself with anger and disappointment. This is the Biography Channel. I'm the only actress he knows you have to pay to keep your clothes on. Reality meets personality only on the Biography Channel. Biography Channel. What a concept! Excuse me? Out, I said. I am off duty. As soon as I get in, you off duty? I... I no want to argue. Man, I don't want to argue either. You're gonna go where I say. This gonna cost you. Okay, let me get this straight. The wedding you're inviting me to is your ex-wife's? Yes. As your date. Isn't it romantic? No. No, it's not, actually. It's perverse. So what's your answer? Well, I, I have to say yes. Why do you have to say yes? Well, because I'm, I'm completely fascinated. But I have to remind you, I'm a writer, and it's too juicy not to use it. No, fiction only. That's the deal. Come on, no newspaper okay, stories. Well, there you go. Again, you know, making the rules. Only one. Okay, well, I have one. We're not sharing a room. Of course not. Separate rooms. All right. Easy, Chief. Of course. It's a little definite for my ego. Well, I'm not just pretending to be a gentleman. Good try. Excuse me, sir, but your credit card was rejected. Are you kidding? Uh, no, I ran it twice. What? No. Please, I don't want you paying, Marnie. No, Come on. No. Please. You know what? Please. You'll owe me. I like the sound of this. Manny. Yeah. All right. All right, I'll be right there. Duty calls. Yeah, same here. Looks like you have a new U.S. attorney. 
Oh, yeah, who? President names New Jersey lawyer slash politico Bruce Logan as U.S. attorney. Ah, oh, damn. Could, I'm sorry. Can I have my pager? What do we got, Captain? The cab driver shot Julius Tate. The basketball player? Mm. Georgetown University, great kid. Oh, I gotta go tell his parents. Richard Cabrizi? I'm Jack Mannion, Chief of Police. You're the boss? I tell him I do nothing wrong. Hmm? Self-defense. He try to rob me. He asked you for money? Yes. He tried to stick me up. He say I want your dollars. He go for weapon, I shoot. Self-defense. This is Mr. Debrizzi's gun. That's an illegal weapon, Mr. Debrizzi. Where'd you get it? Three times I am robbed, and who will help me? This is why I shoot. He had no gun. No! This is what Tate was reaching for. Pen and paper. that boy grow up. Did you talk to his family, Joe? Yeah. Some parts of this job you never get used to. Uh, yeah. Julius Tate. You here? What a shame. Did you ever see him play? He's on the same team with my nephew. Nikki, how you feeling about uh, Bruce Logan, his new U.S. attorney, huh? God, I knew we were getting a conservative administration, but this guy's like a tail of the hunt. What's a slick New Jersey attorney coming down here for? Well, for a shark like Logan, there's no better pool to feed in than Washington, D.C. And you're here. I'm the bait. Mr. Mayor. Joe. Gentlemen. Chief. Nick. Sit down. Chief, I want the guy who shot Julius Tate charged with murder. Well, that's up to the U.S. attorney, Mayor. This is a big case, Chief. Too many times my constituency have felt their lives were undervalued. You know, there's an old expression. Kill a mule, buy another. Kill a... Hire another. We've got to put an end to those days forever. Amen to that. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Logan. Pleasure to have a man with your expertise on our side. Well, I'm not sure Mr. Pierce would agree with you. How is it that you described me, Mr. Pierce? Uh, courtroom cannibal. Mm, nice alliteration. We were just discussing the murder of Julius Tate. Man, what a tragedy. I just wish we had a more solid case. What are you talking about, Bruce? No confessions, no witnesses. Your officers didn't do me any favors, Jack. What, you're here three hours already? You're pointing fingers? Gentlemen, do we have a problem with this case? No, no, look, I'm sure I can at least get manslaughter. Oh, manslaughter? Mm-hmm. Oh, you charge this guy with manslaughter, it'll plead down to a traffic ticket before you're through. I don't give anybody a break, man, and you should know that. Logan, if we don't get murder charges here, we're going to have a lot of angry citizens. Yeah, we're going to do our best to take care of things, Mayor. I just wouldn't want things to turn out like the, like the Crawford case in uh, Newark. No, oh, this is nothing like that. But you'll get your conviction, Mr. Mayor. In fact, I'll just have to work a little harder for it, that's all. Yeah. You're a busy man, Bruce. Thanks for stopping by. Mr. Mayor, Mr. Logan, Deputy Chief Nolan. Can't believe his head made it through the door. What is this Crawford thing? It was a murder case. An illegal search turned a potential life sentence into a walk. And Logan's part in it? He defended Crawford. Well, he's on our side now. Bruce Logan's on nobody's side, Mr. Mayor, but his own. Look, Chief, I want a murder conviction on this Julius Tate case. Now you do whatever you have to do to get it, but get it.
So, uh, you know, there's a really big market in returned engagement rings. You know that? What ring? Shut up, Danny. What ring? Giselle's engagement ring. She gave it back. Why? She thinks I'm not ready. Are you not ready? I don't know. Don't know about what? Nancy, this is not the, the place. He doesn't know if he loves her. Danny, knock it off. Tough guy. Nancy. Yeah? I need the stats on crimes against taxi drivers in the last 60 days, please. You got it, Chief. Here are your messages. The Eagle has landed. That was a good movie. This is Robert Duvall and Michael Caine, the plot yeah, to kidnap. not the movie. The Eagle. Your Eagle landed in New York. What are you talking about? The Italian bronze eagle to complete the renovation on the front of the building. You ordered it? No, I did not. Oh, well, you signed off on the plans. Look. Oh, wait, 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 wait a minute. I thought the eagle was already there. I mean, the architect added this monstrosity and I signed for it? Mm hmm How much is it? 25,000. Yeah, 25,000. Well, send it back. How can I send it back? It's from Italy. It's on its way here. Hey, we've got a new DA. Just in time to deal with madman Mannion's mayhem in our city. Bruce Logan, save us from the shootings and the shoes. Of this is PJ Hawks, the last bastion of sanity in D.C. Hello, I thought you were supposed to be in Orlando. Oh, it's tomorrow. Oh. Did you ever see the movie Bridge on the River Kwai with Alec Guinness? What's that? What? Force march through Burma. The men's shoes are in tatters. Their trousers are falling off. They're dropping from exhaustion. Yeah. Oh, that's going to be you walking through Disney World. <laughs> and you die in a thirst and sea world. Famished in jungle world. It's a rite of passage for all parents. I want you to go shopping. Get some sensible shoes, water bottles, good books. Cabby staff. Sir? Yeah. I checked on those credit cards. They're maxed out. It must be a mistake. I paid them. Oh, and the insurance adjuster called about your car accident. What car accident? Danny, would you take care of this one? Chief Mannion. Yes. Doris Evans, president of the Cab Drivers Association. How do you do? Come on. Have a seat. No, I don't want a seat. Can I get you something to drink? Some no, water? I want to find out why you're looking to charge one of my cab drivers with murder because he defended himself. Julius Tate was not armed. He was shot with an illegal weapon. That's not defending yourself. The basketball player threatened him and then reached into his inside pocket. Julius now, Tate. Correct me if I'm wrong, Chief, hmm. but I've read many accounts of where cops have shot unarmed people for doing the same thing. Okay, let's get something straight, Ms. Evans. All homicides, whether the police or citizens, go through the grand jury. I don't make the charge. Well, that may be so, Chief. But if my cab drivers had decent protection, they wouldn't have to resort to defending themselves. Do you know what cab drivers have to do to make a living? They work for minimum wage, with every lowlife and drunk sitting right behind their back. Driving a cab is the most dangerous job in America. Now, I've heard all your big talk, Chief. You owe my people some protection. Mayor, Chief. Ethan? I'm sorry, Chief, but I cannot sit back and watch my drivers victimized like this. I have to speak out. Well, let me get the door for you. No, it's all right. Thank you. I got it. Don't underestimate that woman, Chief. She will say or do anything to push her agenda or to get what she wants. Anything. You two have a history, huh? Oh, boy. I gave Dara Sevens her start in politics. Gave her a job. And she spent every minute of every day on that job undermining me. Oh, she's a troublemaker. Where did the flowers come from? Not from you. Obviously not. So, where did they come from? You're a detective. Detect. So why did Parisi shoot Julius Payne? In a word, fear. If the police did their job, this never would have happened. What or who, in your opinion, is The responsible? mayor. The police chief. 
they are the ones who are really responsible for this tragedy. My taxi drivers have no protection. They have been abandoned by this police department, and when one of them, an honest, hard-working immigrant, defends himself, they paint him as Charles Manson. You're saying that she I'm abandoned saying you. We have been abandoned by our police. We have to take steps to protect ourselves. Are you advocating taxi drivers carrying guns? No, never. But they have to do something. So I will advise my drivers to not pick up dangerous-looking passengers. Who is that? The vast majority of crime in this city is committed by young black men. Are you saying don't pick up young black men? Yes. Oh, what kind of reaction do you expect from the black community following such a statement? No, no did, did, did a black woman just say that? Well, it's a racist policy, and I will not tolerate it. I want any driver who refuses to pick up a passenger arrested. Can't do it, Mayor. We can seize their licenses, get them off the street. Then do it. 